Right now on Denver 7 News at 5 o'clock, relief as firefighters save homes from weekend fires. We were tossing a mental coin on we've lost the house and everything else, and maybe it will go around us. Very lucky and very safe. A tough situation there. We are checking in on the progress of fire crews. It's a pivotal day in the battle for Ukraine. Resistance fighters are looking to hold on to the city of Mariupol. Back here at home, farmers and their budgets are taking a hit because of the war. We take fuel, fertilizer, uh, labor, repairs. Everything is higher. Finding cheaper alternatives isn't easy. Hmm. Plus, the Nuggets are looking to rebound tonight against the Warriors in game two. Why the Joker says he isn't worried just huh. yet. Uh, Nikola Jokic, one of three, named a finalist for yeah. NBA MVP this year. He is the reigning MVP. Could be two in a row. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Nicole Brady. And we do have some beautiful weather on tap. 80 on the seven-day forecast, mm. Lisa. Twice. You get it on yeah. Tuesday and then again later <laughs> on in the week. Yeah. It is going to be really warm. The good news is the winds have calmed down a bit. Fire danger won't be quite as high here in town today, but it's still really dry out there. And you can see wind speeds this morning at about 5 to near 10 miles per hour. We'll see some breezier and gustier conditions pick up tomorrow. So fire danger here over the next couple of days is going to be higher. And today down across parts of southern Colorado, we will see some red flag warnings and fire weather watches. Starting off in the 20s, it feels like 16. Definitely a chill in the air early this morning. But we have clear skies and a lot of sunshine in store for the early morning drive. Take a look at the warm up. We'll be likely at about 50 degrees by noon. And then we're going to see a good 15 to about 20 degree warm up uh, between lunchtime and about five, six o'clock. So it's going to get a lot warmer later in the day and uh, we'll get to near 70. It looks like Jason this afternoon, closer to 80 tomorrow. We'll take a look at those 80s on the Super 7 day coming up. And we have good news up in the high country as we have I-70 open once again on that eastbound side. We had it closed down coming from Silverthorne to the Eisenhower Johnson tunnels. Uh, that was for a crash and other safety concerns. The Loveland Pass is now closed for avalanche and uh, other safety concerns. Take a look from the camera down there at Silverthorne and we had uh, those eastbound lanes closed now they're open and so westbound sides open as well mostly wet with some slushy areas maybe some slick areas for you up there and there are other uh, parts of the high country that are covered in snow take a look at the drive here in town it doesn't look too bad on i-70 out here across the east side of town there's a crash at 29th and sheridan that might slow you down a little bit uh, just south of lakeside take a look at the rest of the drive over here to the east side of town no problems for us there 225 and the denver tech center drive is wide open Firefighters are making progress on two fires that broke out over the weekend. The Duck Pond fire near Gypsum and the 37E fire just north of Lyons. Uh, let's start with the Duck Pond fire near Glenwood Springs. Crews say it burned 89 acres and is 60% contained. Fortunately, the only damage has been some burned picnic tables and fencing at recreation sites. All mandatory evacuations have been lifted and I-70, which was closed up for part of yesterday, is back open. We talked to people thankful to go home. Totally grateful because Colorado's had some major fires. It's devastating through a lot of families. So we're completely blessed. Couldn't be happier that we get to go home to a home. Now, firefighters believe this fire was human caused, but they haven't said exactly what started it. Firefighters in Larimer County say the 37E fire near Lyons is now 100% contained after burning 114 acres. All evacuations in the Blue Mountain area were lifted yesterday afternoon and no structures were lost. Well, sadly, it was a violent Easter weekend across the country as officials investigate three mass shootings. In Pittsburgh, officials are looking for the suspects who opened fire at a party at an Airbnb home. Two 17 year olds were killed. At least 11 others were injured. More than 200 people were inside the rental when the shooting happened. Nine people were injured after a shooting at a nightclub in Hampton County, South Carolina overnight into Sunday. The owners say someone fired up to 30 shots. Police have not released information on a suspect or a motive in that one. Also in South Carolina, police say a fight between multiple people led to a shooting at a mall in Columbia Saturday. 14 people were hurt. Police arrested one person who is now out on bail. Meanwhile, back here in Aurora, youth violence is still considered a public health crisis. Denver 7's Christian Lopez is live there this morning in Christian. Aurora leaders heard from the community and they are ready to intervene to prevent more violence. 
Yeah, they put this plan together after getting community input when it comes to what people's biggest concerns are and what they want to see done. So the Youth Violence Prevention Program team actually did an assessment back in 2021 and they've been working on a strategic plan based on those findings. So youth, parents and others in Aurora ranked the type of violence they believed was impacting the city the most gang, domestic and gun violence were among the top three. So tonight city leaders will look over that plan that targets youth ages 10 to 24 and it would vo focus on prevention and intervention, especially among those who are in high risk communities, those who are showing at risk behaviors, as well as youth who has re-entered the community after being in custody. So city council will discuss this plan during a study session tonight, and then they'll decide if this will move forward to the city council meeting tomorrow. Live in Aurora this morning, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Thank you, Christian. This morning, Ukrainian forces are fighting to the end to keep the port city of Mariupol. Russia's military says about 2,500 Ukrainian fighters are inside this sprawling steel plant. The group ignored an ultimatum from Russia to surrender. If Russia does take the city, it would be a strategic win, providing Russia a land bridge from Crimea to the eastern Donbas region. And in the western part of Ukraine, at least six people were killed in Lviv after apparent missile strikes. Until now, that city has been spared much of the violence in almost two months of war. Concerns about supply issues connected to the war are driving oil prices to the highest we've seen in nearly three weeks. Uh, gas prices, meanwhile, have been holding pretty steady. The average in Colorado for a gallon of regular is $3.95. That's the same as last week and a month ago. But like the rest of us, Colorado farmers are closely watching the cost of fuel, and now they're concerned about access to fertilizer as well. Denver 7's Veronica Costa reports. Everybody has uh, filled the pinch. You take fuel, fertilizer, uh, labor, repairs, everything is higher. Um, if it was just one category, it probably wouldn't be as bad. But yeah, you know, every farm's budget is hurting just because of that. And so just a lot of praying and hoping. Tim Volverding and his dad do all the work on this 3,000 acre farm. Twice Wheat, milo, millet, and pinto beans and, uh, grown in this soil. Farming is tough, but these days it's fertilizer that concerns Wolverding the most. About a year and a half ago, it cost about 200 bucks a ton. Now, instead of 200, we're between seven to 800 dollars a ton. Uh, so you're looking at almost four times the cost uh, up front just for the same amount of fertilizer. This year, he expects to spend more than $200,000 on fertilizer for all 3,000 of his acres. That's even after trying to use less. We do a lot of directly putting the fertilizer with the seed. So instead of putting the fertilizer across everything, you're putting that fertilizer right in that place that the seed actually needs it, and you can reduce your costs that way just about by reducing the amount that you need. There's alternatives like manure, but that just won't work for him. Well, in theory, uh, manure is a great uh, idea as an alternative to commercial fertilizer. It's hard, it's hard, because uh, manure weighs a lot, and you need a lot to make up for that difference in uh, pounds of nitrogen. This isn't an isolated issue. Other farmers are also looking for solutions. It's really a balancing act, and, and there's really no good answer for, for any of our producers. They're all just going to sort of have to muddle through it as best they can and hopefully be able to turn a profit this year. All Volverding says he can really do at this point. And it's just a lot of praying, uh, Veronica. Praying those fertilizer prices start coming down. In Anton, I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver 7. Turning to sports this morning, it is a must-win game tonight for the Nuggets. They lost game one to the Warriors Saturday. They certainly don't want to go down 0-2 before the series comes back to Denver. Uh, they were outmanned in game one, kind of out-hustled and out-rebounded too. Nikola Jokic had 25 points, 10 rebounds, and says the team isn't panicking yet. Figure it out, watch video, just um, try to be better, you know. It's a... Uh, uh, hopefully it's going to be a long series, and uh, hopefully we, mm, we came here to, to get to steal one if we can, of course. Uh, the pressure is not on us. Uh, we are underdogs here. Hmm. Nuggets still dealing with some injuries, too. Tip-off from San Francisco is at 8 o'clock tonight. Games 3 and 4 will be at Ball Arena in Denver. Game 4 is Sunday at 1.30. You can watch it right here on Denver 7. Forget magically delicious. Lucky Charms might be making some unlucky people sick. We'll have the latest on an FDA investigation.
I'm John Mattery. Said anyone in your family leasing a car, beware the lease turn in surprise, where you can be hit with hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars of extra fees. That story coming up.